Hi, my name is Kara Booker, and I'm a program manager for Chrome and Chrome OS accessibility with Google. And I'm Emily, and I'm a product manager for Chrome and Chrome OS accessibility at Google. And if you're listening live and have any questions, please be sure to submit them below, and we'll be able to answer them live during the session. Today, we will talk about the importance of accessibility in the workplace, walk through existing accessibility features, upcoming accessibility features, and then talk through some of our resources. Before we get started, don't forget to explore and enable in accessibility features in your settings first. At the bottom right of your Chromebook, select the time or press Alt, Shift, and S. Then select settings, search for accessibility, and select manage accessibility features. If you want to enable them even quicker, turn on always show accessibility features in the system menu of your Chromebook to skip some of these steps in the future. Roughly 1 billion people or 15% of the world's population have some form of a disability. At Google, we believe that building with and for people with disabilities should be the norm. When we do this, all of our products are truly better for everyone. In fact, my job is dedicated to building technology that makes Chrome browser and Chrome OS more accessible. We like to categorize disabilities in a few different buckets to make it easier to conceptualize and talk about, and to also provide a framework for talking about our built-in features. So the first bucket is vision and includes blindness, low vision, color blindness, and farsightedness. Our second bucket is hearing, which includes deaf and hard of hearing. Third, we have motor, and this can range from total paralysis to limited dexterity and mobility. And our fourth bucket is cognitive, which includes challenges in processing information. So this number is compounded when you take into consideration situational and temporary disabilities. So for instance, a situational disability could be if you're in an environment that is highly distracting and loud, and this could impact the way that you receive information. Or if you have a sprain, this could be a temporary disability, and you may have trouble typing or pressing down on a touchpad. So at some point in everyone's life, they will be impacted by some form of situational, temporary, or permanent disability, whether it's yourself, the people that you work with, or your family and your friends. 69% of information workers work remotely, and 56% of US jobs are now compatible with remote work. So accessibility has become even more important with more and more employees working remotely. And it's important that end users can access the tools they need to get their work done and engage with coworkers, customers, and partners, wherever they are. So let's go ahead and dive into the different accessibility features that we offer. So first, Chromebooks have many different accessibility features built right into settings. And when you customize your settings once, those settings like high contrast mode, magnification and dictation will stick no matter which Chromebook you sign into, as long as you use the same Google account. Here are a few examples of features to support end users who are low vision or blind. First, users can increase the size of the cursor or increase the text size for better visibility. You can also change the color of your cursor to improve its visibility. You can now choose from seven new colors in addition to the default black. This is designed to help people with low vision and complements other ways the Chromebook cursors can be customized. There are also a number of ways to zoom into core content. Users can increase the size of browser or app content or make everything on the screen bigger, including app icons and Chrome tabs. For those that have more significant vision loss, there's an option to use our built-in sc full screen magnifier to magnify the content up to 20 times, or our docked magnifier, which magnifies one third of the screen and refits the rest of the screen in the remaining two thirds. 
This is really useful for users that may need greater magnification, but would like to be able to orient themselves on the screen. Next, there's a feature called Highlights, which helps to draw greater visibility for some of the key parts of the screen. You can turn this on for highlighting around the mouse cursor, the text caret as you type, or the keyboard focused item. So if you're using tab shift or the arrow keys, for example, and you want stronger focus indication. So you can enable these one at a time, two, or all three at the same time. And when this feature is on, you'll have a colorful focus ring that appears just when the item is in motion. So for example, if you're moving the mouse cursor, then the ring will appear around the cursor as it's in motion. And as you, as you stop, it will fade away. The idea is not to add more clutter, but to add more of a visual cue for important pieces of the screen. Next, for those with light sensitivity or eye strain, you can turn on high contrast mode to invert colors across the Chromebook. And on Chrome browser, we also have Get Image Descriptions from Google, which is a feature that automatically provides computer-generated descriptions of any unlabeled image on the web. And it now works on Chrome for Android as well. So when users use a screen reader in Chrome, if an image doesn't have alt text, for instance, Google automatically provides those descriptions of the unlabeled images. Also, users can now export accessible PDFs on Chrome browser. Users can save web pages as a PDF that will include metadata, like the page's headings, lists, tables, paragraphs, and image descriptions. And this helps people with low vision or who are blind that are using a screen reader to access PDF files. Next, features that read text out loud can be useful for users with visual impairments or learning and processing challenges. On Chromebooks, we have two different forms of spoken feedback. First, we have select to speak, and this lets users select items on your screen and hear them read aloud through spoken feedback. You can also see word-by-word -word highlighting as text is spoken for better visual and audio connect, which can be really useful for people with cognitive disabilities. We also offer screen shading behind the selected content, which can be particularly beneficial for people with dyslexia as it can promote better focus. And we recently added enhancements to select to speak which allows users to adjust the rate of speech, to pause speech, and navigate easily paragraph by paragraph. And our second feature for spoken feedback is our built-in screen reader, which is called Chromevox. And this is often used by people that are more significantly visually impaired or blind. And users can navigate around the Chromebook and the Chromebook interface using audio spoken feedback or braille. And we've added a number of new functionalities, including improved tutorials, the ability to search the Chromebox menus, smooth voice switching, which automatically changes the screen reader's voice based on the language of the text being read, smart sticky mode, which enables you to avoid pressing the search key for each shortcut for faster navigation. And users can also adjust their text to speech settings which allows customization of voice, speech rate, pitch, and volume. And now I'll go ahead and pass it over to Emily to talk more about features that help users with mobility impairments. Thank you, Kara. Hi, this is Emily again. I'm the PM for Chrome and Chrome OS accessibility. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our features for our motor impaired users. This includes users who have trouble using a mouse, a keyboard, and or a touchpad. First, we offer an on-screen keyboard that allows you to type into any text field using your mouse or the touch screen. We also offer dictation, which lets you speak to be able to type into these text fields. This can be accessed by turning it on in the accessibility settings and then either pressing the microphone at the bottom of the screen or using the keyboard shortcut search plus D. We also offer a bunch of different keyboard 
and mouse settings. This includes things like being able to change the keyboard repeat rate, being able to tap to click or tap to drag. Um, we also offer sticky keys, which allows you to use those tricky keyboard shortcuts that make you press more than one key at a time. Instead, it lets you press them sequentially. For users who have trouble putting pressure on a mouse, we offer automatic clicks. Automatic clicks allows you to hover your mouse over any item you want to click, and after a few seconds, we'll click it for you. For those users who have more severe motor impairments, we offer switch access. Switch access enables you to control your entire OS with one or two buttons. The way switch access works is it will scan through the different items on your screen, either automatically, or you can scan it yourself by pressing a button to move between the different items. And then you can press a different button to select the item on your screen that you want to click on. Now I'm gonna talk about how we support our users who have limited hearing. For those users who have limited hearing in one ear, you have the option to play the same sound through both speakers through our mono audio option. We also offer a bunch of different captions capabilities. You can caption right in Google Slides or Google Meet. We also offer the ability through the Chrome browser to capture any audio or media on the web. This includes things like podcasts you might listen to, videos that you have playing, or even an MP3 file that you want to drag into an empty tab. And all of the captions on your Chrome browser are on device. This means that you don't even need the, an internet connection to get the captions. Good boy, Chester. Are you ready to show everyone your new tricks? We also offer Android Live Transcribe, which you can get through the Google Play Store, either on your Android device or on Chrome OS. This lets you caption any spoken audio, including someone who's hanging out in the same room as you, as well as other audio on your computer, and it will transcribe it right there for you. You can also find these accessibility settings right in the admin console, where you can turn them on, off, or leave it up to the user on a per device or per user level, just as with many of the other admin policies. On top of all of these built-in functionalities that we've talked about, you can also get a bunch of different extensions for your Chrome or Chrome OS. For example, this includes things like stuff to help you focus, keep you from going to a bunch of different websites or to remove clutter from the screen. It also includes things that might help you check with grammar or word completion for users who that would be beneficial for. If you want more information, please feel free to check out our additional accessibility resources. This includes our Help Center articles, the Google Accessibility site. Um, if you'd like more in-depth walkthroughs on any of these features, uh, please do check out our YouTube accessibility video series. Um, or if you want more one-on-one -on -one help, feel free to chat with any of our customer support agents at g.co slash disability support. And please do check these out for yourself. Feel free to go to the admin console and look at the accessibility focused policies or go straight into accessibility settings on your Chromebook or in your Chrome browser and try them out for yourself. And then please do share these features with end users to make sure that they're getting the most out of Chrome and Chrome OS. Thank you for joining. If you have any additional questions and weren't able to catch us live, for the Q&A, please feel free to email chromeonair at google.com. Also, don't forget to register for our next upcoming session. This will be on June 10th for the Chrome Insider Browser Tips and Tricks for IT Admins. Thank you again.